So Skip and Shannon went ahead and gave us some heat to react to. Of course this whole Kevin Durant thing is going on right now because he's beasting in the playoffs, but it's taken a step further, whereas Stephen A. Smith was just arguing that Kevin Durant is the best player in the world, now they're debating Kevin Durant coming for that second spot behind Michael Jordan, passing up LeBron James, so hey, since that's where they want to take it, today we are going to be reacting to two different shows because there's one with just Skip and Shannon and then another one where they brought in Eddie House, so let's see what these dudes were talking about. I'm tired of people trying to equate what LeBron did in going to Miami and what KD did, KD did going to Golden State. They're trying to compare a speeding ticket to armed robbery. Yes, in the eyes of the law, we both broke the law, but one's going to be treated more harshly. You remember, before LeBron arrived, they had won 47 games. They went out in the first round. Before KD arrived, they had 73 wins and lost in the NBA Finals in a game seven. <clears throat> Guys, can you do me a favor? Any time from now on, where, whatever social media site you're on, Twitter, wherever you're at, right, and you're discussing basketball, and somebody brings up LeBron James joining a 47-win Miami team, can you please cut this part from the video and post it so we can spread the word? Because it's one thing for people on the internet to be saying it, but dudes are on their own show getting paid to talk about this, and they're still spreading what's really close to misinformation. Factually, you are correct. The 2010 Miami Heat won 47 games and were a first round out. But I'm looking at the two rosters, the 2010 Heat and the 2011 Heat side by side. The 2010 Heat had five players that returned that were on the 2011 Heat. Dwayne Wade, Udonis Haslam, Mario Chalmers, James Jones, and Joel Anthony. They were entirely different teams. Chris Bosh signed to the 2011 Heat first and then they proceeded to redo the entire roster. LeBron James did not join the 2010 Heat. That is a completely different team and it makes no sense to bring up in this context that Shannon brings it up in. Please spread the word and kill this false narrative. Okay, let's go to second of all. MVPs in the regular season is four to one. Mm, Bron, mm. all NBA first teams, mm. 12 to six. Mm. Bron, all uh, first team, all defense, five nothing. Braun. Mm. So at this point, I do want to make sure that I'm on record for saying that Kevin Durant has not passed LeBron James as the second greatest player of all time. Definitely not. I'm not saying like throughout his career that he absolutely positively couldn't because who knows what he's going to do. But this conversation to even be having right now just kind of seems a little bit uh ratings based. But anyways, I do want to point directly to what Shannon is doing right now and I want to bring up that if you go back and watch my Michael Jordan LeBron James video that I did a year ago I basically well one of the strongest points I had was that Michael Jordan was still ahead of LeBron James and I did pretty much what Shannon is doing right now to say that LeBron is ahead of KD so that kind of seems like he's arguing against himself because he also argues that LeBron James is the GOAT that he's greater than Michael Jordan but he's literally using the argument that you would use for Michael to be over LeBron if that makes sense he's just going through and listing the accomplishments that's why I called that video a very simple argument because you go through and just list the accomplishments Michael has more in the same way LeBron just has more than KD right now so I kind of wish Skip would have brought that up oh look this is what we know when Kevin Durant left OKC Russell took that team to the playoffs when LeBron left the Miami Heat what happened the following year when LeBron James left the Cleveland Cavaliers, the worst team in the NBA is who, Skip? Is it my turn? When LeBron James left the Miami Heat, the player who played the most games for the 2015 Heat was Mario Chalmers at 80 games, and he only started 37. Dwayne Wade played 62 games. Udonis played 62. James Ennis, which was a new guy, played 62. Chris Anderson played 60. Norris Cole played 47, Chris Bosh played 44, that was one of the biggest things that happened there. He was out pretty early with a calf and then the blood clots happened. Yeah, my whole point with this is that LeBron didn't just leave the Miami Heat and then they just smoldered. Like, they signed new talent and they actually seemed like they could really put something together that year and they got injured to hell. So I just kind of wish people would bring that up when they're talking about the post-LeBron Miami Heat. Because it's not like Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh really ever got the chance to show what they were capable of. But here's the point. Over the last two years, Kevin Durant has taken over this league. 
He is now determining the outcome. He is the difference maker who is deciding the championships of the Nas- National Basketball Association, and he will do. He will decide this year's, and on July 1st, he will decide the next couple of three championships okay. because I'm pretty sure he will go to New York, and then we'll start to see what happens. And if he goes up there and starts doing what he has been doing, you're going to be in bigger and bigger and bigger trouble because your guy's legacy is pretty much what it is and will be because I don't think he can add much to his legacy oh, he going can't, forward. But KD can't. Well, two things here. One, the fact that Kevin Durant is basically the most powerful player in the NBA right now that doesn't really have much to do with him passing LeBron James in any all-time list. He's the most powerful player in the NBA because he really controls most of the power balance. So there's so many free agents and they can all do whatever they're going to do this summer, but if KD does not leave Golden State, it hardly matters what anyone else does. However, if he does then leave Golden State, in my opinion, at that point, he's not deciding the next two championships. He's really only influencing it because you go somewhere like New York or wherever you go, you're never going to, there's never going to be the circumstance to build another team like Golden State just like that. It's highly unlikely. So yeah, he either he either decides or influences the next few championships with his move this summer, but that again has nothing to do with him surpassing LeBron on an all-time list. It really speaks to more of him being maybe the best player in the NBA today or the most impactful, the most powerful. And then the second thing, this is probably going to come up again in the Eddie House segment. Yeah, if he, this is what we've all been saying, right? If he does something like goes to the Knicks and he's successful there, again, this will come up, but I am kind of interested to see what happens then because at that point, he will probably have his third title this year. And then you go be successful in New York too. That's where I start to wonder what time does to his accomplishments just because People have short memories and they're always going to remember what KD did, but people also tend to live in the moment. Recency bias is a thing. But it'll also be a really good point too though that if he goes to New York and wins there as well, especially when they haven't won since like the 70s, that would be a pretty historic thing. That is more of the point where I think you could be having the conversation about where he is all time because again, everything he does in Golden State, I mean it counts, but it doesn't have the full weight that it should, like that a three-peat should obviously. But more so, yeah, with the Knicks, I think that's when Skip and Shannon should really be having this conversation about surpassing LeBron on an all-time list. And he would have to do a couple of things besides just win in a new place. Said Golden State was up 3-1 to in the finals over LeBron James Cavaliers. And what happened right on schedule? Steph came up even smaller than he often is in the postseason. And Clay just disappeared like he occasionally does in the postseason. And Draymond Green occasionally through that span, after he got suspended for that pivotal game five, he occasionally looked like the second round draft pick that he was. And I'm going to say it again. If you took those three and just put them in the park and you're choosing sides, you're just choosing up to play five on five shirt skins. And you look at those three. I just don't know if you're picking them automatically one, two, three, if there are 10 guys lined up in the park, because they don't look the part. Any of those three guys just don't look the part. And I think they've been a little overrated in star power in, 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 uh, you know, as far as a, having a dynasty, I, I'm not so sure about that because I've, I've never bought completely into Steph in the postseason. I said the other night he actually hit a big postseason shot that should have been disqualified because he should have been disqualified with his fifth foul. Will one of you please go fetch me a cookie because I sniff out bullshit narratives from months away. Please, please go fetch me a cookie because in a barbershop talk now, probably two, three months ago, I swear on everything. I said, and this just goes back to what I just said about short memories. I swear I said that years down the road, people were going to start justifying what Kevin Durant did with this exact narrative. I swear. This is why I talked about in the future. And yeah, it goes to even this conversation we're having about him passing LeBron now or one day. It's about the fact that if he did stay in Golden State and just load up his accomplishments, eventually they will be taken at face value because this is no different than what people do for LeBron in Miami. They start trying to talk about Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh and trying to take their status down. This is the same thing that's going to happen with Golden State. The narrative is going to be that Klay Thompson was, he was mostly a shooter but couldn't lead his own team. Draymond Green was iffy. Then they're going to go to Curry somehow. Oh goodness, we're going to (laughs) talk... Y'all are really going to find a way to drag Curry down. Skip, this is this is the seeds right here. 
five years from now, what Skip is saying is going to be something that people say everywhere. They're going to say that Kevin Durant led these teams, that they were never that great to begin with, it's a BS narrative because in it's playing, he's trying to be sneaky here because the whole thing is in 2016, if you just looked at the three players individually, LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love versus Draymond, Clay, and Steph, there was an argument to be made that as individual players, Cleveland had the better big three. Luckily, basketball is not just played at the park. It's not all about just one-on-one -on -one skills, and Golden State was an amazing team, and I hope nobody ever forgets it. We're not about to just... We're not about to just kill this whole thing and act like Golden State was not that good before KD went there. Like, come on, Skip. You, come on, Skip. So he couldn't match LeBron in MVPs because he didn't have his usage rate. If you want to compare usage rates over career, ball in hand, LeBron's had it like a third more of the, of the game than, yeah. than Kevin Durant has. And even in Golden State, he just shares the ball. He just gets them when they come to him. What Skip is trying to say here actually makes some sense because earlier Shannon was bringing up the fact that LeBron has four MVPs and Kevin Durant has one. And then you started talking about, you know, leading the team in points and assists. And my immediate reaction was I did want to bring up how different their roles have been because for a lot of LeBron's career, especially the first seven years, he was literally asked to do everything. They never really had the star player for him to share the ball with. So a lot of the responsibility and usage fell on his shoulders. And so he did get to show a little bit more of what he could do. And the reason Skip makes a little bit of sense here is because in 2014, that was the one year we haven't seen Kevin Durant with another spectacular teammate. And so obviously that year, his usage went way up and he was asked to do more and he did do more. So there is at least an argument to be had that if Kevin Durant had to play the role that LeBron did, maybe he wouldn't have been as good in it, but he would have definitely had the opportunity for more MVPs because he would have had more years like 2014 where he just had to go dominate all the time. But that still wouldn't take away from LeBron having four to KD's one because then someone could easily just turn around and talk about the fact that to be MVP, you pretty much always have to be a high seed. And because LeBron James had the high usage rate due to the fact that he didn't really have amazing teammates, it kind of all works together because he was always winning a lot when he didn't really have that great of a team. They didn't always make it very far in the postseason, but the MVP is a regular season award, so... Could Miami go home and win all three games just to get it back to game six in Oklahoma City? I don't think so. So what if LeBron loses that? No, what, what if? But, but think about LeBron's play, his finals career. What if Ray Allen doesn't hit the greatest clutch shot ever? What if Kyrie doesn't hit the closing shot to win game seven against Golden State why we do, in the three? Why we but, but think about that. You, you got away with fouling Kevin Durant there. It's possible if, if everything went wrong for LeBron or went right for the opponent that that LeBron James would be, he'd be 0-9. Uh, so Could he be 0-9 in the finals? So yeah, this is kind of why I don't watch many sports shows. This is more just on the entertainment side because I'm not going to lie. I've had the thought too. Like that, that was the whole premise of my, uh, one of my first videos ever. One of the first big videos was about LeBron Three times his legacy was on the line and he responded. Two of those scenarios were right there with what Skip Bayless was talking about. And yeah, I, I was just, you know, always thinking that he easily, easily, easily could only have like one championship right now. But that's just basketball, Skip. <laughs> like, that's just basketball. Sometimes a game or a whole season comes down to one play and it either happens or it doesn't happen. And that's the result. So yeah, he could easily be only one of nine right now, but he's not. So that really doesn't mean anything for Kevin Durant being above LeBron James just becomes just because he's came close to losing before or his legacy has came close to being destroyed again in those Ray Allen and uh, Kyrie Irving games LeBron did his part too so yeah it came down to one shot but it says even more for his ranking that's part of the reason he's ranked so high is because in those moments he was what he was supposed to be for the most part of course the three right before Ray Allen that was supposed to be his shot but you know like I said it either happens or it doesn't. So what are we going to do about these four MVPs in the regular season to one? What are we going to do about that? We got to do uh, when, when you're the solo star, you can win a lot of MVPs in the Eastern Conference. It's well, easy. Oh, Cakewalk. Oh, uh, man. This is, again, why I don't really watch these sports shows that much. Uh, this is really, this is just banter with no real level of analysis. Look, I'm, I'm with you. Man, come on, Skip. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> When we talk about the Eastern Conference as LeBron James dominated it and there were a lot of injuries and there was never really that much of a challenge for him to get out of the East, there's a conversation to be had there. But fam, the MVPs, come on now, we're not about to attribute his MVPs to just playing in the East as well. Every time LeBron won MVP, he was really killing those whole seasons. 
like even go back to 2013 yes Miami was far and wide very dominant in the conference that year but man I, I, te I have a specific memory of texting my friend one day as they were showing LeBron's highlights from NBA TV and just texting my friend and telling him like bro this is unfair right now like he's playing at a level that nobody's gonna reach this season nobody's gonna be able to stop this season come on skip like come on skip Man, uh, if this if he gets four if he gets four ring, rings right and four MVPs you have to look at, at KD and say man he might be passing him as, as the greatest of all time uh, that be the argument against Jordan mm -hmm. I mean you have to look at it that way especially yeah, and, if he leaves and go get and, and remember it's another one he's one back to and there we go Eddie is talking about exactly what I said in my barbershop talk in the eyes of history in the eyes of time is Kevin Durant going to be allowed to finesse three championships three easy championships with the Golden State Warriors and then go win one elsewhere and people are going to treat those four as just what they are championships right now people treat them as less than championships but if he goes and just gets one especially if it's next year with a team that's not even in the playoffs right now with a team that's actually going to be in the lottery and you go there obviously that would require him getting another star with him probably like Kyrie or somebody if that's the case and he does that and history forgets then he will have finessed his first three and then when it got one and all of a sudden he's up there with LeBron I'm telling y'all this just might be the way that history remembers it. Okay, that's basically it for the show pieces. I was a little bit disappointed just because they didn't really do a whole lot of talking about the complications of Kevin Durant actually surpassing LeBron James right now. It was really just a lot of banter about both of their careers and really not a whole lot of analysis, but maybe that's just what it's like when it's live, right? Maybe when it's live, y'all, it's just like talking basketball with your friends. You're not really having a whole lot of analysis going on, are you? I, I don't know. Anyways, Kevin Durant may be the best player in the NBA right now as we speak, but he's definitely not surpassed LeBron James as the uh, second greatest or just on the all-time list wherever you have him. He's not past him there yet. And what I'm going to say is I don't think he's ever going to pass LeBron on Golden State. I just don't see it. As long as Golden State is always just the most dominant team and you know that no team in the playoffs really stands a chance against him, how, or how, is, that, how is that going to rank him over LeBron? I just I don't see it because this is just going to set a precedent then that as a elite player in the NBA you can just go play for the best team and win like you're supposed to every year and all of a sudden you surpass people who did more amazing things than you I mean whatever this is a conversation that's had daily now but anyways that is all for today's reacting to sports media takes hit the like button comment and sub if you enjoyed remember to send me some takes because somebody actually sent me this one so if you want to see me react to some of these shows, then definitely hit my inboxes on any social media accounts. The link is in the comment section and the description. And yeah, hit the bell next to the channel name if you want notifications on future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.